Hello, this is Mike Hayes and welcome to our video on music theory. In particular, our focus on this video will be about the tritone or flat 5 substitution. We'll be discussing three things. Firstly, what it is. Secondly, how it works. And thirdly, we'll show you a couple of applications of the tritone substitution. So firstly, let's have a little bit of a talk about what it is. In jazz harmony, the tritone is both part of the dominant chord and its substitute dominant, which is also known as the sub-5 chord. Because they share the same tritone, they are possible substitutes for one another. This is known as a tritone substitution. The tritone substitution is one of the most common chord and improvisation devices in jazz, but we don't want to restrict this conversation to just jazz. It's also used, the tritone substitution is also used in sophisticated pop groups and commercial recordings. Uh, I'm thinking about groups like Steely Dan. And we'll be having a look at how Steely Dan actually applied this flat 5 substitution and uh, they applied it to a very common chord progression to create a completely new, fresh sound just by using this one music theory concept. Okay, flat 5, tritone, what do these terms mean? Well, they're a way of measuring musical distance, what musicians call intervals. And in music theory, we use these terms to describe the distance from one note to the next. It's part of the language that musicians use to communicate musical ideas to each other. Now, the particular musical interval that we're discussing on this video can be named four different ways. In fact, it can be named more than four different ways, but there's four common ways that musicians refer to this musical interval. And the four ways are tritone, flat five, augmented fourth and diminished fifth. All these terms are interchangeable. However, when I'm discussing this interval, I'll be referring to it as either a flat five or a tritone. Okay, so that takes care of what a tritone is. Let's have a look at how it works. One of the keys to a really good chord progression is the control of consonance and dissonance. And essentially, dissonance in music creates tension, which equals motion. Consonance equals resolution or rest. Now, to help you understand this tension and resolution and the flat five uh, concept and so on, I'm just going to start with some examples. And to begin with, I'm going to use as a reference point the note E. That's the sixth string open on my guitar. And I'm just going to talk about the overtone series for a moment. I've covered the overtone series in great detail on another video, but I just need to touch on one or two aspects of it to uh, clear up how this flat 5 uh, substitution works. Uh, essentially, when we're hearing a note, we think we're hearing just one sound, but what really is happening is we're hearing a combination of notes. Uh, so our sound that we're hearing is really a compound sound. So when I'm playing this note E, I'm going to call that the fundamental tone. Now the next note in the overtone series is an octave higher. So we have the fundamental tone, E. We have its octave. And the next note in the overtone series is the fifth, the note B. So when we're talking in terms of consonance and dissonance, the most consonant note would be the fifth. And now it's time to have a look at a number of different ways to locate the flat five note on the guitar fingerboard and also to explain several of the music theory terms we mentioned earlier on the video. Here's an easy way to visualize the flat five concept on the guitar fingerboard. Again, I'm going to use the note E as my reference note. As we've just discovered, the most consonant note after the fundamental tone is the fifth, and musicians call this interval the perfect fifth. In contrast to the perfect fifth, 
we're looking to find the maximum amount of dissonance. When we look at the guitar fingerboard, it's easy to see how this works. An octave is made up of 12 semitones, and since the guitar fretboard is divided up in semitones, each fret marking out a semitone, it's easy to find the halfway point, which would be at fret 6. And this is where the flat 5 note is found. So the flat and fifth of E is B flat. And it's right next door to the perfect fifth, which would be B, that's found on the seventh fret. So to sum up, to find the flat 5 note using an open string as a starting point, we find the midway point or the halfway point of the octave and that's where we'll find the flat 5 note. For example, if we begin on the note B, the second string open, and looking at the octave being 12 frets, the flat and fifth of B would be found at the 6th fret, which would be the note F. Another interesting thing about the flat 5 note is that it's also referred to as the blues note. So it's the extra note that's added into a minor pentatonic scale to create a blues scale. Let's review. The flat 5 is the midpoint of the octave. There's 12 semitones to an octave and the flat 5 is the 6th semitone. Musicians use the flat 5 note to create dissonance. And as we spoke about earlier on the video, it's this dissonance that gives motion to the music. So with the flat 5 note in the midpoint of the octave, it's essentially like a tipping point that can help create the greatest amount of tension. And the greater the amount of tension, the more dramatic or powerful the resolution. The flat 5 note can also be referred to as the blues note. And when we add this flat 5 note to a minor pentatonic scale, we create the blues scale. Now if you want to hear this flat 5 note in action, you might want to listen to the opening notes in Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze, where the flat 5 note, the B flat, is played in octaves, low B flat, high B flat, low B flat, high B flat. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we'll be developing all these ideas further on the next video. This is Mike Hayes and thanks for watching.